that's that's where the the shift has happened over the last one or two years where it's more about brand awareness especially manufacturing because you can't always be there when they need you right you literally have to touch everybody every three weeks in order to be somewhat relevant eventually those engineers and purchasing people are going to get annoyed they're not going to want to talk to you they may remember you yeah, but not in a good way yeah you can't call them that other right Chicago. Gotta love this. Snow in March. It's just the dynamics so, of it, so right? So have us with no marketing manager, it's not uncommon. It's so common. Okay. Typically marketing is the last department in a manufacturing company. Yeah. And usually it's just the end of the highest paid salesperson's title. So they're not just the VP of sales, sales, of sales and, marketing. and marketing. And what does that actually mean? Oh, they just, you know, they work with the marketing agencies that they use. But they don't actually drive marketing, right? And then we can, I can see the space. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you needed to see any more about what we do as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with it, so it's not... Okay. Um, yeah, so your, back, your background was manufacturing? Yeah, yeah, manufacturing? yeah, so I started out in engineering manufacturing engineering and I did okay. that for about four or five years and then got into application development engineering so Where I worked, you, where's your degree from I don't have a degree you don't have, okay you know, so I started uh, started going to school for engineering and then stopped once I got into sales changed it to business and then just never never finished it from there um, but I was doing application development engineering for a in Chicago okay. uh, it was a startup and they were recently sold to out of yeah. Europe so know a lot about the mechanical side um, my dad was a tool and die maker for okay. 30 years so I kind of grew up around he this grew stuff. up in that business yeah did he have his own little shop or no he works for which is in LaGrange are you familiar with them I know I don't know much about them okay they yeah they're electromechanical switch manufacturer okay. um, so I worked there for five years my whole family worked there and then okay. my dad just retired uh, last November oh, from good. there so yeah, it's it's been in the family manufacturing. It's been in you know it's all that it's all that we've done. It's all that I've been around. So um, it just made sense that once I got into plastics sales and started selling it and marketing, and then did about ten years in that. Um, eventually, it just came down to trying to help more people and you know, just start an agency and just strictly work with manufacturing companies at any given point in time. Um, we try and and be more. We try and go deeper than wide. So we're not trying to get, I'm not trying to get 20 clients at just doing one of their services. We're trying to build a relationship with one client, give them as much value as possible, and then add another client that makes sense. And we kind of scale that way. So it's very strategic where we've got people that come in and say, can you just do this for us? And we'll be like, we can, but we want to look at your bigger picture. Is that one thing that you want us to do really going to be that effective? And we'll say, no, don't do that. Wait until you can do this in six months, and then let's talk. Because, you know, guys that will say, like, can you write blog posts for us? Can you do some content marketing? We can. But if we write a blog post and we do content marketing, how are you going to distribute it and get eyes on it? And if you have no distribution source, then it's no point of spending a month for us to write content when nobody's actually ever going to see it. It just makes no sense. So that's why we look at things differently. It's not about... Yeah, we can do it, and we start doing it. It's like, we can do it, but how much value is it actually going to provide? Because it has to work at the end of the day. We want everything that we do to work, and if you only do one piece of it, it's going to be less effective. Customize it around around the client's needs. And then and then once we send the clients a proposal, it may come down to where you're like, I only want to spend a month for the next year on my recurring marketing. And that's where we say, based on that, this is what we do. Only do this. this we prioritize. You know, we'll do this at and, and save you the for the next year. We'll do this because this is going to be the most effective for that money. Or we say, um, you know, we do this thing at 
Yeah. We're not trying to be like, okay, let's see what we can get. Um, it all comes down to the effectiveness. Okay. The the one mistake that a lot of people make is they go after. Um, do you guys ever go after purchasing commodity managers or strictly engineers? More engineers, more often engineers. More engineers. Yeah. So they'll go after the decision maker, VP of product development engineering, VP of packaging engineering, director of packaging engineering. They go after them. Well, that guy may only be on once every three weeks, but all his engineers are on more frequently. So you have to go after the decision makers and the influencers to the decision makers and then also people that at the company that can give up ideas. So they're not an influencer, they're not a decision maker, but they're just an employee that says, hey, did you check this out? These guys are cool. And they pass it on to their boss. So you want to target them too, because they're on more frequently. Do that. Quick spin before. What's, what's left a manufacturer of packaging um, a prospect that we've been talking to for a few weeks and I love I just love looking at that manufacturing stuff <clears throat> and the cool stuff that people do so they make make equipment to do um, blister packaging and filling blister packs for pharmaceutical companies so pills and things like that and it's just so cool looking at the equipment and seeing how everything's made um, I've seen that stuff before, but then being able to speak intelligently to it, it's just such a great, great thing when you're doing what you love. So talking with that prospect today, the biggest takeaway, and this is something that I hear pretty often from manufacturing companies is, isn't marketing really just advertising or what is marketing at the end of the day? So this is, this is an old school thought. And I honestly, back in the day when I first got into manufacturing sales, used to think that marketing was just website management or you're doing a trade show. You've got somebody that prints the brochures for you and sets up the trade show and makes all the arrangements and that's the marketing person. And the reason for that is because, as I've mentioned in numerous articles, marketing is typically the smallest department at a manufacturing company doesn't matter if you're 3 million a year in sales, 30 or 300 million, it's always the smallest department. And I've seen companies that are 150 million a year in sales and they've got a team of six. And I've seen companies that are three, 400 million a year in sales and they've got a team of zero. So the question of, you know, the importance of marketing, what is marketing? It came up in the meeting because while the president believes in it, the, the founder, the CEO, the CEO just has a, has a different mentality about marketing. The easiest way that I could break it down of what it is and the importance behind it is that when your sales guys are going and, and hunting for business, making cold calls, doing visits, doing RFQs and all that stuff, they're doing it during a certain amount of hours of the day, right? And you can only get so much out of somebody in sales during those hours based on the performance of the salesperson is gonna dictate uh, the efficiency that they have, what their skill sets are is gonna dictate how, how often they can close business and how often they can grow their territory. But from a marketing standpoint, the nice thing about marketing is that it never sleeps. It's always going. It's the one facet of your business that is always out there that doesn't require a person's time or the human factor to drive awareness in off hour. So while marketing used to just be websites, now the shift has come over the last couple of years to where marketing, marketing is a tool for salespeople to bring interested people in the target demographic into the sales funnel. You don't have to go out there and reach out there and grab them and pull them in the way that sales uh, the sales aspect of a business does. That's that mission behind it. Marketing is just bringing people in that are qualified and focusing on brand awareness and focusing on um, the strategic side of targeted ads and the UX of the website and the call to actions and how much content you're producing. But at the end of the day, marketing is, in my opinion, essentially the brand awareness aspect of your business. So you can get brand awareness by salespeople, but again, you're relying on the human factor and you're also relying on people's time. You know, you've got brand awareness during those certain hours of the day. Um, whereas marketing, it just never sleeps. It just keeps on going. So the shift hopefully will eventually catch up in manufacturing. 
marketing in almost every other industry is as important as sales, but manufacturing, it's been a difficult transition. And that's just the nature of the culture and that's the nature of the companies out there that are doing it. The biggest issue that a lot of companies have around the marketing is that you get with an agency that just doesn't know your business. So they don't, they're, they're testing and learning more than they're actually performing and providing some quantifiable results because they don't understand what it is that you do. At the end of the day, the, the main difference between sales and marketing, sales is pulling people into the funnel, aggressively reaching out and touching them um, verbally through phone calls. You know, marketing does it through email marketing, but still sales is going out there and grabbing them and bringing them into the funnel. Whereas marketing, good marketing strategies and good marketing campaigns focus on brand awareness first and just letting people know that you're in the space and if you produce good content on a regular basis, then that brand awareness drives high pretty quickly, but it all comes down to content. So something that I deal with on a weekly basis, daily basis with people that they don't have a marketing department, so they're starting to get into it because they know that it's important, but they wanted to understand what is the true value behind it? What is that department? Because there just isn't, there isn't enough data out there or people out there talking about marketing specifically in manufacturing to really connect those dots between the differences of sales and marketing. So it was a, it was a great meeting with the prospect. We're excited for the next steps but that was just the, the biggest takeaway from that meeting, which is something that, that I hear on a daily basis. So focus on your marketing. That's the theme of today in this blog, is focus on your marketing as much as you do on your sales. Marketing is, should not be an afterthought. It is right now in manufacturing, but it shouldn't be because marketing a lot of times can outperform sales because you're removing that human factor. So if you like this piece of content, share this with somebody that doesn't think that marketing is important. If you feel like there's value here, share it with them, show them the content that we're producing to prove to them that the shift is happening and manufacturing is catching up slowly but surely, but people that aren't focusing on marketing and manufacturing, they're just gonna get left behind and the competitor is just gonna take over and that brand awareness will be a tough hill to climb when your biggest competitors are already at the top of it. So like, share, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I need 100 subscribers in order to get a custom URL. So I'm hoping that people will subscribe. Send it to your friends and family. Get your kids to subscribe. Set up with different email addresses, like 10 email addresses. Set them up, sign up with each one of them. I need that 100. I'll keep on producing that content. You gotta give me some love back with some some subscribes.